If you know the names for any of these knots, please leave them in the comments. Start with your overhand knot. There we go. And you want to make sure that your free end is on the outside. We'll pull out our ears. One ear is going to go around our anchor point. The other ear is going to pinch and pass through the first one. And then we're going to take our free end here and thread it through that loop. Now we'll cinch it down. There we go. And what you end up with is a hitch that you can apply tension to. And when you're done, you can pass the standing end back up, pull out your buckle, and release your hitch. Here we have a traditional trucker's hitch, and we're about to cinch our rope down, get all our tension in. But we didn't store our rope right, and we left an overhand knot in there. There's a couple options we can do with this. One is we can take the rope down and pull the knot out. The other is we can go ahead and cinch down our trucker's hitch and tighten down this knot within the line. No one wants to do that. So here's what we're going to do, since we're a lazy trucker today. We're going to break the knot open, and this center portion here, we're going to pull up. Okay. Now we're going to rotate the knot so that when we pull, each end clamps down on its own side. There we go. Now this isn't going to stay, it's not a stable inline loop. If I keep pulling on it, it's going to slip out. And so what we'll do to keep it from slipping out is we're going to add a little half hitch over the top. So I'll just take this on the left hand side, twist it and throw it on top. And now it'll keep our inline loop in place. And I can stitch down my trucker's hitch without tightening down the overhand knot that's in the line. And it hasn't jammed so much that I can't undo what I did. There we go. This knot is inspired by real name. He's a dad that likes to make blanket forts. So we'll take two bites and we'll do one over the other to make our overhand knot. And what that leaves us with is a loop that shortens when we pull on our standing end, and then the other loop shortens when we pull on our free end here. Our standing loop, we're going to take and place over the top of our free end loop, and then we'll tighten that up. And here's the idea behind this knot. Imagine we're making a blanket fort. I'm using a tarp. We're going to take the loop and collapse it down using our free end here. There we go. And the other end, the standing end, is going to be anchored to a door hinge or something like that. What we want is if a kiddo puts too much tension on the sheet, the knot is going to slip and release it without anyone getting hurt. But at the same time, it's enough to keep your sheet or blanket suspended so that you can enjoy your fort. Here we'll take our rope and we'll roll it towards us. Roll it again. And then we'll pull this out. There we go. We've just made a slip knot. And you can see the overhand knot right there. We're going to tighten down our overhand knot. There we go. And now with our free end, we'll take it and we'll thread it through our loop. And then pull on the standing end. And look what we get. A very stable stopper knot. And you can see it's actually a trefoil knot. Each end goes around the center diameter. And if you look at my logo, you might recognize it. This is a great knot to use if you want to create an anchor point that doesn't slip out, but then you're able to take it back out with your knot. Instead of doing a single strand with your overhand knot, you'll do a double strand with a bite. And this one will create a nice loop that you can use to throw around your anchor point. The water knot works great when you're tying two straps together. We'll do our overhand knot and then we'll take our other strap and we'll just trace the first one. So we'll go inside all the way around and then tuck it back through. We're just tracing the first one all the way around. Dress it up a little bit and there you have it. Take one side and pull in an overhand knot. You'll take your other side, thread it through, and you'll tie an overhand knot with it as well. And then when you pull them together, they collapse on each other and they make a very strong bend. This knot was shown to me by a guy who built roller coasters. 
and he would use it to help sling and position the roller coaster tracks into place. Here we're creating a loop that does not slip. Tie in an overhand knot at our end, and then we'll pull open one of our ears and grab a bite in our standing end. We'll thread through the back, and then this loop is gonna go over the top, and now we'll pull it tight. There we go. And this does not slip. Now there is another version of this knot that you can do so that it doesn't slip under high tension. We can go over it, just leave a comment if you'd like to see it happen. If you watch carefully on this next knot, you'll see where the overhand knots are pulled in. So here I'll pull in an overhand knot. Next I'll go through and I'll create another loop. Okay. And now I'm going to take this side here, I'll place it through. On the other side, I'm going to go around and place it through. There we go. Now let's pull it all tight. And this is a hunter's bend. But if you didn't catch where that overhand knot went in, take a look at the red side. Can you see it now? Now let's look at the blue side. Now you can see it's just two interlinked overhand knots. Here's an old knot painters used to use. Give yourself some length, tie in your overhand knot, and then pull the standing in until you have a loop that's bigger than the can. Now we're gonna grab the ear on the left and pull it downward. There we go. We'll take our can, place it right here in the middle, and then pull our ends up. And there we have our bucket hitch. Now to tie these two ends together, we're going to use a knot that you already saw earlier in the video. Overhand knot, bite, we'll pass it through here, and then over the top, tie this tight, pull this, there we go.